All right, let's go back to Los Angeles for a second because Clippers star Kawhi Leonard, he's turned down his player option of $36 million to become a free agent. He's got a couple of contract options if he stays in L.A. Sign a four-year deal, $176.2 million, or re-sign with the Clippers for just one season and then sign a five-year max deal next year. A lot up in the air, a lot of domino effects from this as we count you down to free agency beginning 6 o'clock Eastern time. That's when teams can begin to negotiate with players. That's why we bring in our front office insider Bobby Marks joining us to help help figure these things out and what the domino effects could be. Let's start with the two-time finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard. How will his decision impact the Clippers organization immediately as far as what they're able to build around him? Well, yeah, as you look at the Clippers' salary cap situation, technically kind of under the cap, but they still have Kawhi's cap hold counting. So when you slide him in there, likely $39 million, a, a two-year contract, one plus one to get him back out in the free agency. You see that number kind of goes, now they're $29 million. Yeah. I mean, even like if we look at their, their salary, their luxury tax, they're in the luxury tax. It's limited now. So now you're looking at players like Reggie Jackson, mm -hmm. if we can go down here. Um, Reggie's gonna cost you a little more than that $4 million. So you put him in there. I mean, it's it's basically kind of bringing back your own roster. So you're looking at Reggie Jackson, you're looking at uh, players like Nick Batum. Remember in the draft, they were able to move uh, back uh, up uh, four slots to get Keon Johnson. They made uh, BJ Boston, Jason Preston, but Sage, it's gonna be about youth movement here because this $39 million number is going to be rehabbing for most of the season here. And there's gonna be a big emphasis certainly on, on Paul George, but you're look, looking at most of this roster coming back, but with an injured Kawhi Leonard. And that's the thing, is to not even fully know where he's gonna be health-wise, but it, it's still Kawhi Leonard. And here's the other thing, with him opting out of his contract, they do not have a disabled player exception. They were able to get a $9.5 million disabled player exception if he opted in. Now that he is technically a free agent, that goes out the window. Wow. So that's a resource that they now lose because he's a, he's a free agent. Yeah, obviously with numbers like that, it's going to make things a little bit tighter. And, and if they want to really compete out there in the Western Conference, they're going to need a healthy Kawhi yeah. and then a little bit more. Uh, one of his former teammates in Toronto got the ring together is Kyle Lowry. And Woj reporting that Kyle uh, could be headed to Miami in a sign-and-trade agreement with the Raptors. So, so again, take us through the numbers and how the Heat could make that work. Yeah, when we look at Miami, and we'll, we'll pull them up here. So what happened yesterday was they exercised the option of Goran Dragic. Right. There was two different ways they could have approached this. They could have gone under the salary cap and tried to sign Kyle Lowry outright. They decided to exercise that option and act as a team over the salary cap. So now we're looking at a trade standpoint. Lowry at roughly $25 million, Dragic at $19 million, and then maybe we throw in a player like Precious Achua. And what happens is, is that we take both players out and we put Kyle in. You're still a little bit under the salary cap. And what happens, you can have a player like Duncan Robinson that you can bring back here you have his bird rights, you can exceed the cap, so you're staying over the salary cap. You have your $9.5 million mid-level exception to go out and use in free agency. I don't think it's going to get a player like DeMar DeRozan. Which they would love to pair them back up together. Yes, the that, that would be have to be a discount there, but I don't think we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. And, and, and you know what? De DeMar might do that, right? It, for, because it's been a tough couple of years there in San Antonio. It hasn't gone the way he wanted. And to get back with him and play with him, you could see the possibility, but today your gut for that would say don't get your hopes up? No, let's just see how the market plays out. Okay. I mean, I've seen guys take who we thought were going to earn 12 to $13 million taking $3 million because that's just how the situation develops. Right. Okay, the, the countdown clock continues over there. Five minutes, uh, five hours, 17 minutes. Hey, if it was five, five, five minutes, I'm running off the stage right now. <laughs> yeah. Don't go anywhere yet. I need you. You're, you're still coming back for the next couple of hours with us live on Sports Center. Thank you, Bobby Marks. NBA as we count you down to free agency beginning tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern time, when teams can begin to negotiate with free agents. Chris Paul is one of those free agents. The Suns guard officially declined the $44 million player option on his deal for next season. So Chris Paul, an unrestricted free agent. Sources told Woj yesterday that both Paul and the Suns are motivated to negotiate a new deal once talks can begin later today. Also, Clippers star Kawhi Leonard 
He has as well turned down his player option of $36 million to become a free agent. Leonard has a couple of options to stay in Los Angeles. He can sign a four-year, $176.2 million deal, or re-sign with the Clippers for one season and then sign a five-year max deal in 2022. And then another move announced yesterday. The Miami Heat picked up the $19.4 million team option on guard Goran Dragic. Sources tell Woj that the Heat's decision to pick it up is a possible re- precursor in utilizing him as part of a potential sign-in trade with the Toronto Raptors for star guard Kyle Lowry. David? And the man himself, Woj, joins us now with free agency set to begin at 6 o'clock Eastern today. So, Woj, let's, let's run through a f- few of these. What's the latest on this potential Kyle Lowry deal with the Raptors and the Heat? Yeah, I think there's a, a, a lot of traction uh, I think pushing Kyle Lowry toward the Miami Heat. It's been a team that he's been intrigued about playing with. He's got a close relationship with Jimmy Butler. He fits right into that Heat culture and, and certainly a contending team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, after 6 p.m., you know, the Raptors in Miami can start talking about a sign and trade agreement. Uh, you know, that would, that would allow uh, Lowry to go there, uh, you know, add a contract number that he would like, Goran Dragic. Precious Achuo, uh, a couple players from Miami that you would expect those teams to be talking about. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of momentum ultimately uh, to lead Kyle Lowry to the Heat. Lowry won a championship in Toronto, of course, with Kawhi Leonard, who is also a free agent after he declined his $36 million player option. So, Woj, what are you hearing about Kawhi's plans in free agency? The expectation is that Kawhi Leonard would re up will re-up with the Clippers. Uh, you know, they can start talking about a new deal uh, again after 6 p.m. today. Uh, he's really going to be spending the coming year rehabbing that ACL injury. You know, I think there's some hope that maybe he could play at some later stage of the season, but there's also the possibility that Kawhi Leonard would be out all season. And the Clippers are preparing and, and looking at their roster and, and their salary cap uh, you know, I think in, in taking that into consideration is they look at a little bit of a longer view, especially a potential season without Kawhi Leonard. But the belief is that he will return to L.A. OK, uh, like Kawhi, Chris Paul also declined a sizable player option to hit free agency. Forty four million dollars. That's a big number. What are the Suns going to have to shell out in order to retain his services? Well, that's something that they'll be able to start talking about again today. And I think. There's uh, uh, a lot of pull between the Suns and Chris Paul. Uh, both want to be together. You know, both want to find a way to get a new deal done. I think you can expect them uh, to land on a long-term extension, certainly something multi-year that would keep Chris Paul with the Suns. He wants to be back there. They want him back. Uh, it's just a matter of the negotiation. Still chasing that elusive ring. Two wins away this year was Chris Paul with that team. And Woj, you've also reported that the Sixers continue to speak with teams about a potential Ben Simmons trade. What's the latest on that? Yeah, Philadelphia continues to canvas the league. They're asking a steep price for Ben Simmons, as you would expect they would. Uh, I think their hope is, and Ben Simmons' hope is, that they can find a deal somewhere before the start of training camp. You know, Philly was on the phone yesterday. I expect they'll be talking to teams Again today, you know, they want an all-star level player. They want multiple uh, first-round draft picks, pick swaps. Uh, So uh, they'll continue to do that, see if they can find a team that meets uh, something close to that price. But remember, Ben Simmons has four years left on his contract. The Sixers can simply bring him back to training camp again. All right, free agency set to begin again today, 6 p.m. Eastern. Rookie extensions, including those for... Guys like Trey Young and Luka Doncic can't be discussed until midnight Eastern. Big day in the NBA, which means it's a busy day for Woj, who's given us the very latest here on SportsCenter. Keep it going now with NBA analyst Kendrick Perkins live on SportsCenter. All right, Perk, we know about Ben Simmons. We know about the the share of struggles he's had last season. 